Okay, so we're gonna start chameleon painting our fire chameleon, and when it got fired, it turned white, and it's now hard and permanent and durable. Um, so he's all set to go. I was debating when I was gonna paint mine if I wanted the liquid watercolor or something thicker like what you see back here, which is tempera paint. Tempera paint, and I'm gonna give you guys a choice because everybody might like something different, but tempera paint, and this is a second grade project, but this was tempera paint, and you can see you get like a thicker, bolder color, um, which could be really nice. Um, the watercolors uh, are a little bit more kind of luminous, which means brighter, a little bit more see-through. They might pick up the light a little bit better. So there's not really a right or a wrong choice, um, and I'm gonna leave that up to you. Um, on my chameleon, I want to do almost like a lime green for his body. And when we mix colors, yellow and green are right next to each other on the color wheel, if you see that on my wall. And so when you mix the two, you get a version of them. And so I know that yellow and green together gives me this super bright lime green. And I'm just gonna start applying it right to his body. If you do choose watercolor, you're gonna notice that the paint absorbs into the clay almost instantly. I mean, it's kind of fascinating. Um, and it also is probably gonna take a couple of layers to get it as bright as I want it, because you can see down here on his leg, it's already faded to where I can barely see it. Um, but it's super easy to do. On his body, I can use a nice big brush because I'm trying to work on large areas. I know chameleons change color. It's kind of the fun of them. So if you don't want to do green and you want to do something else, you can just let me know. And the first thing we're going to do is just paint him. And I already need a refill on my yellow. I should have brought that over here. So hold on just a minute. Okay, so I added a little bit more yellow. Mix this back up to my lime green. And, ooh, much brighter. Um, you can layer, too, because if it looks really yellow, I can just go back with green. And let this soak in. You can see a sculpture from all sides, so I'm going to do a lot of tipping and turning, trying to get all the angles that are visible painted. I don't know if I'll be able to go totally under his belly, but the back of the tail, little bottom, every little part that you can see and reach, I'm going to add some paint. And it's kind of cool too, like as I'm working, I'm noticing some parts are a little bit more lime green, some parts are a little bit plain green. And what you want to do is like up to you, um, but if chameleons transform the way that they do, you know, maybe he's in the middle of transforming and so he's multiple shades of green. And I'm kind of curious to see what you guys are going to do because they don't all need to look the same. We don't all have to think about doing this the same way as our neighbor or as me in terms of the color that you choose or the material that you choose, whether it's watercolor or tempera paint. So I've almost got a base coat on here. I need to get in between his legs. You don't want anything to look too white because It'll look kind of incomplete, like we forgot about it. And then I don't want to soak him, but a little bit of water where I just put that can blend one color into another. Try to get underneath his, oops. See if you can see this underneath his neck. 
every little part. I'm going to start to slow down when I get close to his eyes and his tongue and things that are supposed to be another color because I don't want to be sloppy and careless and splash green on areas that I wanted white or pink. But on the body, I'm not super concerned about that right now because I'm on big spots. All the way up to his chin, slow down around his face. Little toes. Try to look in every corner because the sculpture is three dimensional and it can be viewed from multiple angles. So we need to look at it from multiple angles when we paint it. Keep tilting it, checking it out. I'm probably going to wind up doing, I don't know, at least two more coats on his body because I do want it to look bold. do that you know all in one day if there's time um, or I can add to it another day it's just whatever you like but usually the first time through with the watercolor it fades right in but the nice thing about that is you can control when you want to stop because if you like it light you stop then if you want it darker you keep going and it just sort of has that, I would call it dreamy, dreamy look. Just that soft look is what I mean by that. Okay. And if you're doing temper paint, that thicker paint over here that you see, or that I showed you on the, on the um, gnome that the second graders are doing, you probably are going to want to slow way down on your application because that will show mistakes a whole lot more, if that makes sense. That darker, thicker paint is going to show up a lot more in terms of uh, just being able to see something that went wrong. And so you just have to be aware of that. Be careful. I'm trying to get underneath him a little bit in between his legs. It's a little tricky, but just keep tipping him, reaching in there. I might go to a smaller brush if I need to. The best you can it doesn't have to be perfect. It's the best you can do. And then we're gonna let this dry. And we're gonna come back and work on more coats if we want. And the leaf and the eyes and the tongue and all that good stuff.